Welcome to the, the special Diwali edition of Kumble Corner with myself, Super Joshi, and Curran Mehta. Hello, Curran. Hi. Um, don't forget, by the way, before we get any further into this, if you like us and you want to keep watching more, hit subscribe below if you're watching this on YouTube and hit follow wherever you are. And also, it is your duty as a human being, a lover of cricket, to tell everyone you know about this fantastic podcast um, about cricket, particularly Indian cricket, called Kumble Corner with two Ks. Um, and that's also how you can search us on the socials, X, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. So right now we are in a a bit of a a break, a bit of a lull, shall we say, in terms of the cricket. There's a, a, a series um, that's probably gone on too long, a bit like the American elections. That's India, New Zealand. There's one that's probably more like the, the UK elections, which is getting through very quickly, which is South Africa, Bangladesh. Um, both have a bit of a bearing on the World Test Championship. Um, and India have broken records. But, I mean, where do we want to start? Do we want to start with Ashish Nehra rejoining the IPL after stepping down as leader of the opposition in the UK? How are you feeling, Karan? Tell me. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily anticipate starting with the IPL. Um, yeah, no, there is a co- there is a little coincidence there. Uh, it's the classic, have you seen... Rishi and Ashish in the same room at the same time? Probably not. Um, yeah, the IPL should be exciting, I guess. In theory, you're probably not going to get the most out of me right now because I'm just sad. Um, I'm yeah, this is, a, this is our sad. This is our sad episode. Yeah, KL's going to go somewhere new. Virat is captain. I do think there's a little bit of proving it to the BCCI with that move. Or from all reports, it was that. He basically demanded captaincy, and uh, yeah, which I love. I love that, and I think just with how catastrophic this test series is going, I think it's one of those uh, you don't really realize what you've missed until it's gone. And so Virat is now going to remind everyone um, what we're missing in terms of leadership. Um, Sunrise has had a really critical group of retentions. I think getting. Kumar ready for six crores is a is a discount deal compared to how rates are going right now. Obviously, retaining Clausen is exciting. Um, they got rid of Stark. Um, it should be fun. The auction's on its way. Uh, on the same token, who gives a shit? India cricket's a disaster. Yeah. Um, well, our production team kind of slated me um, when. When I said that maybe you know when I when I said that maybe we should just disband the BCCI, I mean yes, it was in the context of kind of fan hyperbole. Hyperbole, when we lose, it's like yeah, everything is is falling apart. Um, but by all accounts, everything is falling apart. Um, you, you, we had this conversation about fireworks. In the US, you have amazing fireworks, so you don't know the situation. But in the people in other countries, perhaps in Europe um, and definitely in India, will know this. But sometimes it's Diwali. The uncle is offering you buy one box, get two free. So you, you've walked away with three boxes and you think you've got a major, amazing deal. This uncle is probably also very happy. Um, he's thrown in some sparklers and some fun snaps because why not? You get home, you're about to unload this, this massive thing. You think, yeah, this is going to be cool. You've gathered everyone around. Hey, check this out. This is pretty cool. So cool. Big bangs, big noise, big lights. And it's just a shitty little fountain. Just goes... And that's... It's basically what's what the first two tests in this India New Zealand series have been, and India have played like that, and that is even without Kane Williamson turning up for New Zealand. They have New Zealand haven't even needed their best ever player in the last bazillion years. Yeah, um, it, it, it's shocking. I think, for lack of a better word, it's not competitive. It's relatively lifeless in the sense that. We never look comfortable, and the second that we do look comfort, a wicket falls against the pace of play. Um, our bowling seemed to be on par, I guess. Probably, I would say on par with the New Zealand bowlers. Our batting was just um, considerably worse, and so it is. This is not. It's not one of those matches where you lose and you're like, all right, we can build on this. And I thought maybe after that 46 and then that remarkable 303 for three, 
encompasses it where we were quickly wrapped up for another 63 for seven. And then this match was a chance to say like, all right, that was a fluke similar to what happened in after Adelaide, after that 36, we bounced back won the next three, um, honestly, God, it wasn't even something I was hoping for. It was relatively something I was expecting, which is a luxurious privilege that India is now sort of grown me into having. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've done a lot of soul searching super Joshi. Um, I've thought a lot about this and how to react. And the numbers are jarring in terms of, here, I'll pull them up. The What's happened is I think for the last four years since COVID, our top order has been underperforming more often than not, but we've had some back order batting that has done really well, salvaged the innings, Rishabh, Ashwin, Jadeja, whoever. Um, and then we have the likes of Bumrah, bowling and it's gotten us out of a lot of situations that when you win you don't really think about but when you lose it's really exposed and now in this match in these last two matches uh, i guess outside of that second innings um the first match once the top order sort of fiddles away the back order back of the lineup wasn't able to double carry the weight that they're expected to um, so so drop ashwish ashwin and jadeja is what you're saying no, no. Well, Jadeja, Jadeja needs to figure something out. Um, again, his pace has gone up like three or four kilometers um, in the last four years, which has, I think, had some sort of benefit on his white ball bowling. Um, mm-hmm. But it has created an issue in test bowling and specifically in India where pace isn't as critical for the spinners. Um, Especially but, on this pitch where you needed to have like this, the slowness kind of helped. Yeah. Um, here, let me pull up these stats real fast. And he, and he bowls a lot of no balls as well, actually. Yeah, uh, shocking amount of no balls. Um, India's partner, average partnership for the first six wickets. This is from Dwipley. Shout out to him on Twitter. He's now on, he's now private, but I think he's an American actually. Um, Indian fan, great, great follow if you guys can get it. Um, India's average partnership for the first six wickets, uh, in Asia from 2016 to 2019 was 58. And opponents under those same parameters were 30. Uh, in 2020 and after, uh, it fell to India's average of 38 and the opponent's average to 28. So while right. we dropped an average of 30 runs, the opponents dropped an average of 20 runs. Um, and so here's where the soul searching really began. Since this series has been so relatively unemotional and lifeless, I think I've had to, I've been forced to cater my new perception. And that is to enjoy this third test match. And that is to enjoy the Border Gavaskar trophy. Even if we lose 0-3 in this one, gets whitewashed 5-0 in Australia. And potentially start considering this as a retirement tour for this generation. For Rohit, for Virat, for Ash, for Ash, for Juddu. Um, they're all like, 35 to 38, I think within the next two years, it'll be 39, 37 for the World Test Championship if we qualify, which doesn't look likely now. Um, So I think now instead of staying up from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. angry, I just have to sit back and be like, all right, we're getting fucked. But with these guys that have brought us so much happiness and so much joy and so much pleasure and so much winning over the last decade or so, uh, we're nearing the end of their career. And I don't want it to be like like Stuart Broad retired out of thin air and shocked everyone. And it was one of those situations where I'm sure a lot of English fans were like, we love him, he's the best, even despite him being a fucking asshole. Um, but you don't want them... It's not like you don't want to give them the flowers when they're gone. You don't want to remember when it's too late. You need to appreciate it in the moment. And I think... I can't get as angry despite how much I want to, how sad I am, how frustrated I get watching this team play, but rather just appreciate the legends that we have. We don't have them for much longer in the cricketing world internationally. Um, And so I I can't get angry. I'm going to view this podcast as a therapy session. I'm going to view the next few test matches as um, sort of a swan song. I think hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully they play for the next ten years and they average another two hundred runs a, a year. But it doesn't. They will, look be, they will be close to fifty by then. Yeah, it doesn't look promising. So we need to get some nanobots working. I think. 
Yeah, and exactly. And and it's one thing if we lose in Australia, but we're losing at home with our strong suit, our supposed quote unquote strong suit on display of spin bowling and spin batting, and we're getting worked. It's not competitive. So rather yeah. than angry, appreciate. So in, in India, you know, it's successful in the sense they broke a record, which they've been holding on for 12 years. Um, but the thing is, last time it was Swan and Panisar. Um, and look, Sandra and Patel are, are good. I mean, they're, great, they're high quality international spinners. But I don't think they're in the same bracket yet um, as Swan and Panisar. Um, so there is certainly that. And we, we, I mean, we expressed this last time. When we talked about, yeah, I mean, no surprise that Pune was going to be a spinning wicket. Um, but that is always has the risk of evening up the contest between someone of you know, the spinners we had um, versus the opposition. Um, New Zealand, I mean, look, Washi came in seven foot in the first innings. Brilliant. Um, but then at that point, there was like, yeah, well, he's done. He's done the business. And yes, he is decent. But what is this? Does this is this kind of foreboding for the for the New Zealand bowling innings? And that was kind of, that was played out really essentially. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I, the Washington would shout out to Gautam and the selection team for bringing him in. Really brilliant. Uh, but they batted him too low, though, right? They probably did bat him too low. Um, but I think when you when the top order just fickles like that. I think you're sort of in panic mode and you're like, let's stick to what we know. Let's stick to who we know and who's been in this position. It didn't work out. Um, so mm. I don't necessarily like hate that rationale at the time. Um, if it was set up better, then you probably could have brought him in sooner. But um, you don't want to bring him in when we're 100 for four and he hasn't played in a while. Um, yeah, and so like the spinning pitch that you mentioned, it's a little bit worrisome that the BCCI called for the next pitch at Wonka to be a rank turner, which back in the day in the Dust Bowl areas of England, like two or three years ago, I'd be like, all right, great. This is spectacular. Make it spin on the first ball day one, low bounce. But like, I'm not confident that we can bat on those, that level anymore. And the same thing happened in the, in the world cup, the one in India a couple of years ago, the tragic 50, 50 loss was we were playing really, really well. And then the finals were like, fuck it. Let's go back to what we know make it a dry, spinny pitch, and we got outclassed. So I don't know what our thought process is. And I think we mentioned this last time, and I think – and this is it. He mentioned it last time as well. He's like, yo, we've been through this. Why, why, why is the Indian team not doing this? New Zealand are reverse sweeping everything. I'm a dog and I know this. That's basically yeah, what, no, what you're saying. Her poor sleep schedule is getting fucked also. Um, <laughs> but – I, I think we mentioned this last time, or maybe two episodes ago, where we talked about the, the veterans not playing in the Ranji Trophy or more domestic cricket. And I said, fuck that. They don't need to. They're the best. Who cares? We don't need to play in these little knockoff tournaments. We might need to. I think Sachin used to, right? He did. He did. He came out. I did read an article about that where he came out like 15, 20 years into his career to, I mean, basically get the basics down and the, the technique and the orthodoxy behind it. And at last time, I could not have been more against it and said, these guys don't deserve, they don't need to, they've proven themselves for so on and so forth. Um, I might be wrong. I am still in the boat, and I said this with Sachin and Dhoni, and I probably have the same sentiment for Rohit, and I know I do for Virat, where they deserve to retire on their own accord if they tank the team for the next two years. That fucking sucks, but they've relatively earned the right to do so, to leave on their on their own volition. Um, so something's got to change. Uh, and I, it's, it's not the worst thing to be exposed right now than after another humiliating defeat in the World Test Championship or winning this series and then getting bent over in Australia. We'd be like, where the fuck did this come from? Um, we know the team that we are. The true colors have been seen. I don't have a lot of optimism. I can't say like, oh, we'll bounce back. I don't have hope for the Bar- oh. Boss Trophy. Dude, it felt ominous. It really feels ominous. We're like, we're like, oh, okay. And it's, it, there's a couple of things you've said. You've once again completely dissed Stuart Broad, and I, and I, I think you're doing this just to get me in trouble now. With his partner. But that, that's 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 another thing. Open it uh, up. Uh, God, yes. Um, 
<laughs> that's been covered before. We won't come back to that one. Um, but the other thing you said is about just about enjoying the games for this, their own sake. And actually, that's refreshing because before the World Test Championship, you could kind of just enjoy every series on its own merits. Um, and yeah, like there is a very real, I mean, Aussies really seem up for it. I'm think, I'm seeing like they're doing bits of, uh, well, I mean, they would be anyway, but I'm seeing you know, bits of media they're doing and just clips and stuff and like they're on it and they're confident. And then there's, there's, there's something about them, especially because they've lost, lost the last two against India at home. Um, and India now to lose against New Zealand is, is uh, slightly worrying. Uh, we were talking before the show, uh, uh, before we started recording about how New Zealand are basically what Bangladesh think they are. Like they're, they're kind of a team that are, are just really good, really solid. Um, and But people don't necessarily give them the credit they, they deserve. And, and Bangladesh kind of act like they are that, but they, they're getting schooled right now against by South Africa at home. They're not at that level yet. I mean, they're working towards that, sure. Um, and then you said to me about New Zealand getting tonked by Sri Lanka beforehand, so uh, before they come to India. So, you know, we were saying that maybe if one was to use um, positive logic, maybe this is this is India Sri Lanka, and the Border, Border Gavaskar Trophy is going to be um, this wonderful expression of <laughs> cricketing wonderfulness for an Indian fan. I mean, this sounds really unlikely, but no, it's it is opium is, is strong. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I appreciate the optimism, and it is a it's a fun angle to look at. Um, and I, I mean, there are some similarities, but the only the only thing that sort of makes me not compelled to jump to that logic is this isn't a, a recent series thing. These issues that we've had have been for years now and they're compounding. And as I said it earlier, when you're winning, the little mistakes aren't magnified. When you're losing, they are catastrophic. And it's any, I mean, I don't think anyone there or anyone listening to this podcast is watching baseball, but it's the same thing that's happening in the World Series right now is the Dodgers are making all the small plays, the defensive technical plays that you make in July and August. And the Yankees have just sort of faltered on, um, doing the little things right. And so I'd like to think that I'd like to think that would come back with a vengeance and fuck Australia over. And especially side note, do you see Tim Payne's bitch ass on the great cricketer? <laughs> I saw that one clip. I haven't seen the whole thing, but I, I, I think I know the main bit you're talking about is the bit about uh, when he says, I was talking to Ash, Ash in, partic in particular. That fucking guy. The Australians are so good at getting underneath my skin. I remember gummy bear gate, uh, gummy bear, gummy bear was was England. I thought it was Simons. That was Matt Pryor. I thought it was Andrew Simons. Uh, that was that was hilarious because I remember that because Zahir Khan then bowled amazing and and actually both of them was laughing and he goes, look, it was a wonderful dis exhibition of, of uh, swing bowling and I'm I'm quite happy watching it. I think that's, unless there might have been another gummy gate, but but I there might have been. Was... If, if I'm wrong, we're we'll definitely have to cut that because I just come off like an idiot. Um, oh, it's fine. We all we all um, there's so much cricket played. Um, that we can't always remember everything. I mean, I've, I've made it. And I mean, last, hand last up, week. Go on. And hand up for me mistaking which uh, cricketing team is more fucking annoying, the English or the Australians. I guess they're relatively interchangeable. Well, also last week, right, we got the days wrong. And I realized what this was. Um, I obviously had it mixed up with, with this test, which is starting on a Friday. You said it starts tomorrow. And I went, yeah, thinking. But really, it started tomorrow for you, but not tomorrow for me because of the US time. Mm -hmm. yep. match, our match so yeah tonight. yeah so this starts it starts for tonight for you does it mm -hmm. 11 p.m how i swear it's a friday game uh, sure. <laughs> great great podcasting by the boys today oh tomorrow at 11 you're right tomorrow 11. i was gonna say yeah so this is this is look it's fine we're just we're just we're like india's top order that's what we're doing Muddling our way through. Yeah, we don't have Rathankar and Nakul to, to boost us up with. They are the brains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the brains with the Lafungas. That's basically yeah, how it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think there's three things of value. But I think generally, if you've already seen the podcast, you'd know that anyway. I mean, we didn't know, we didn't say that. That was pretty self evident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. About those two. No one's Regardless. coming from me for intelligent thoughts. No. Um, hot takes, maybe. <laughs> Look, um, yeah, the, the, 
it's it's going to be one of those where we just enjoy it for the sake of it, just for the love of the sport, love of spectac spectacle. And I think it's a very important thing what you said um, about uh, just enjoying these players while you've got them. Yeah, I'm not like I disagree with the the first part where you said enjoy for the sport and the spectacle. Fuck that, it's not enjoyable to watch. Um, but I do, I, like I said, I had to, the spectacle like a, of the players still playing as well. I mean, not not yeah, not I, like getting castled every like odd ball or chin music. I don't I don't mean the that. Terrible shot selection. Uh, hmm. I mean, Vera getting clean bowled on a full toss. What Satner's just like, yeah, I didn't mean to bowl. I had no fuck. It was shocking to get him out. It's just. Dumb shit like that, which we should not be doing at this stage. Like, save that for the IPL. I don't give a fuck. Um, not when you're in your colors. Um, so, yeah, like I said, it's I can't get angry. Um, I'm annoyed. I'm upset, yes. But uh, in my head, we're not going to qualify for the World Test Championship. I've, I've succumbed to that thought. It's looking uh, unlikely because South Africa have, have played the smart one by basically not playing many tests. Yeah, and that um, which will fix that. Yeah, look, it's always a risk with a team like India, um, but you would expect them to win more than they lose, and, and I think they probably back themselves, but it, it is a risk, absolutely, when you have you have to win more to, to get the same percentage. Essentially, you're, you're expending a lot more effort. This isn't a 2020 game. You've got to play an extra maybe 10 days of cricket. Yeah, um, and six months ago, it, when India looked at the schedule, they probably thought, like, all right, we should clinch the World Test Championship during this England or this New Zealand home series. Yeah. And um, that's definitely why they had it circled on their calendar. It just, all right, we'll have a quick three-game series at home against a decent enough opponent. We'll win. We'll have to win maybe one test match or draw two test matches in Australia. Chuck the, we'll see you in England. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, so I'm basically... Reason. If you're KL now, you're thinking, look, I'm not the problem. That's cool. Uh, Kuldeep, I think maybe we've been slightly injured. I'm not sure if it was completely tactical. Uh, I'm guessing Washi retains his place. I mean, he has to. Yeah, um, especially in, in Mumbai, where HS Patel is probably still licking, licking his lips. One thing I find really bizarre is Indian commentators in English calling him Patel, not Patel. But that's just a... <laughs> do, 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 do you get what I mean? Like, just yeah, I, I know what you mean, but... I've grown up so whitewashed that I don't think I would have acknowledged or even noticed it. Fair like I've, I've got a different, like I grew up in El Paso on the border. I've got a way that I say my name to a Hispanic crowd. I've got a way I say my name to a white crowd and I have a way I say my name to Indians or East Asia or South Asians. So I get but, it. But do, do they think you're Spanish over there? Do they look at you uh, and you just automatically start saying hola hombre or whatever? Yeah. Say. Um Well, my Spanish isn't terrible. I mean, I'm like, I'm just, you have to know it if you live in El Paso. Yeah. Um, no, but I think it's just more like Roll Brown, which is yeah. the common consensus. So, we'll sure. take it for what it's worth. Different types of uh, flatbreads. Um, <laughs> that's years and rotis, yeah. Um, fair enough. Uh, you know, I was thinking, I, I saw Scooby Doo the other day. Um, and it's, while we're on American culture, yeah, that's a natural transition. <laughs> no, he's just got pronunciations. It's just, cause I mean, it says Scooby Doo, right? You know how he says Shaggy? Mm -hmm. Do you ever remember this? He doesn't yeah, say know. Shaggy, does he? He says Raggy. Oh, and it just and it just got me thinking, like maybe like Ratchin is basically Scooby saying Sachin. <laughs> so that was <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, clip that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like what? It was just like one of those That's like a observations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's probably yeah, that does not look Good for my, uh, uh, like, for me claiming to be sober at all. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, casually doing this, um, <laughs> requiring munchies on a Wednesday afternoon. Um, so, yeah, d different meaning to hashtags there. Uh, right. Look, we are where we are. Um, everything is falling apart. Do you have any hope for anything to do with the new uh. No, like I said, I have to go into this just thinking it's basically a charity match. Not that we're like expected to win, but a charity match is all. We get to watch Rohit and Virat and Jaddu and Ash just play the sport that we love in the in the uniform that we love, under the flag that we love, in in the in the version of the sport that we love the most. Um, I have no hope for winning. 
If we win, great. I don't even know if I'll necessarily be excited. Uh, if we won the first test of Australia, then I can maybe see myself getting up. Um, I have no hope. Um, but I have a lot of fond memories of these guys. I can't let myself get angry or hurt. Um, but they've, they've brought me so much joy and happiness and like memories with family and friends and all that stuff that I have to sit back and be like, all right, you know what? They've passed their prime potentially, allegedly. I'm not going to say that about Virat. He's still the greatest cricketer of all time and currently too. Um, but just love them, cherish them, appreciate them. You never know when they're going to retire. I mean, like, would it absolutely blow your mind if India lose this series and one of those generational stars that are up in age just calls it? I mean, it'll be hard to call after a 3 m loss because that's like you can't really retire at a lower point. But it wouldn't necessarily surprise me if one of them pulled a Stuart Broad and be like, all right. By the way, this is my last day of Test cricket ever. I think they will. They will see. Um, I think it would happen after England. If, if if India don't qualify for the World Test Championship, I think we may see that after the England series. Like, if as long as there's no injury, and I, I mean, it may be Ash. Don't do. I don't see him retiring yet from Test cricket. Uh, he just seems to be fitter and younger. Rohit. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I think he's. He may free himself from from the shackles slightly. He, his captaincy has been a bit concerning. Um, Knuckle has <laughs> raised a point a few weeks ago when we first when we started. Um, well, actually, in, in our first episode, first couple of episodes, we, all, all three of us, um, or four of us even at that point, were expressing concern and, and highlighting the, the points that you raised uh, earlier on where you said that actually the flaws, the cracks in India's performance have been there for a while. Like it, it's been pretty obvious, but we've been getting by because um, your number six, seven, and eight are coming in, tonking runs, uh, and then taking wickets as well. Um, you know, whether it's Ashwin, Aksar, and, and, and Jadu at home, or whether it's um, Shami and, and, and Bumrah in, in England, or whatever else has been happening, that's been happening. So, you know, the, the question was raised by Knuckle quickly then with what happens if Gotti. Uh, well, when things are bad on the computer, um, what? And I suppose we'll find that out now. And and actually, look, um, Dravid in his first series, he had Dravid had a better better platform than I think Gambir did um, in terms of the Red Bull setup. Um, and he managed to, in my opinion, he, he was a bit timid and flopped in the South African series, like initially. And, and that was um, was was not fun to watch. Um, so. A new coach losing a new series. He, yes, it's at home, but also this guy's inexperienced. At a certain point, look, it is what it is. Like it's to be expected, is what I would say. Uh, yeah, and I would say that's probably my only concern because I doubt Gautam just started his tenure and it's going to be here for the foreseeable future. It was, and uh, maybe there's there's enough to point blame at Rohit, but it was in the South Africa series. It seemed like I mean we underperformed and we played badly, but. There was at least a little bit of intent and aggression to get wickets, and we had four or five slips, and we had a uh, silly point and all that stuff. This this match, we were so defensive in the fielding. We were trying to prevent runs rather than attacking to get wickets. And I get that in certain situations, but not when you're in India and not when your backs are against the wall. Like runs not, not, be- not, when you're, not when you're India in India. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, not when it's tailor-made for us to be successful. Um, and the thing is, like, mentally, we sh- they should be a little bit more hesitant than we are. So one should bring two, and two should bring three if we keep the pressure on. And it just didn't seem that we had that aggression, which is relatively surprising from what I thought to expect from a Gautam-led team. Um, or even could- Rohit, really. Because, he- I mean, look, this is guy... He- he's an experienced captain. He's not, like, s- some random newbie. Yeah, he's not, but he's never he's he's never been that Virat. He's never been like the like in your face aggressive. No, no, absolutely. But he but he is like a, he he is a, he is a winner, and he he knows how to get. Okay, I mean, the guys won the IPL what five times. Um, he's now won the World Cup as well, the T Twenty World Cup. Uh, he he was in the in the one day final. I mean, like he's not. It's not like he's been flopping. He he's he knows how to get over the line, uh, or get close to the line as well. So. From him, it was also surprising 
Um, I mean, obviously, and you and I had this conversation that, that um, the big criticism and the big kind of sadness, I guess, after Shastri Kohli was Sharma Driver were like kind of the opposite and very timid or very, I mean, not that they didn't want to win, but it was just, they, they, they were went just, about it a different, different way. Yeah. And it, we, we were like, what? It was, I mean, you know, we talk about Diwali. There's a great clip, if you've seen it, of uh, Virat Kohli's being very socially responsible. It's like, yeah, you know, don't, don't, don't burst firecrackers. Be very nice. Like, be careful. Be uh, and Ravi, and he's sitting next to Ravi Shastri and the coach. And Ravi Shastri goes, "Forget that. Do as many fireworks as you want. Have fun. Have a blast. Enjoy yourself." And, <laughs> and it's it's like a pretty, what we have now is is very different. With Gotham, it's more of a it's not kind of a raucous shouty. He's more of a like a, a Hulk. But like when character. he played, he was the raucous shanti. Like when he played, that's who he was. And so I, I was excited to get that little juxtaposition. And I think. That volley clip probably perfectly encompasses. Did, did you? And I'm surprised we hadn't mentioned this. Rohit's post game presser, where well, he sort of list. went on the back foot, and he's just like, "We won 18 straight matches. We were in great form. Like this shit happens. Like we're not the perfect." This is like, it was. And I got a little bit of grief on this, but it reminded me of the India cricket of old. Like we're lucky to win matches, and this is not lucky to win matches, but like. This shit happens. Like, they're a good team also. Like, well, uh, it's like throw your hands and like, oh, what are you going to do? They play cricket. They pay them too. We just lost. They were the better team. It's That's- funny you said that because I was thinking that it's kind of like the older style of... I was thinking exactly the same thing, that the way the performance showed that. I mean, I, I would argue that his response was just very Mumbai. It's like, hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, just, no, that, you don't want to hear not, it. And that's what we used to be. We used to take it we used to accept it we used to let whatever happened to us and we used to adapt on the fly and then we had that span and like obviously i'm a virat glazer or whatever rider however you want to phrase it but there was something to that that the indian um persona in general needs to be more aggressive to be on the forefront to take the attack to them and rohit just to be like yeah this shit happens like, no, dude, this shit doesn't happen. This shit hasn't happened in so long. And it's one thing to lose heartbreaking and put up a fight to an Australia. But a New Zealand team that on paper, we are leaps and bounds better than in theory. Hmm. Um, well, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say leaps and bounds, but we, we, we're definitely better. I think we are. I think we're punching down to our opponent. I think that if we were playing this not so close to Australia, and a little bit has to be complacency, a little bit like it's a trap spot where we're looking forward to Australia already. It's in football. You see this all the time. You play Ohio state and then you play Texas state and then you play USC. Like that Texas state is a trap game in the middle. Well, it's uh, like, it's like, it's like all England cricket, right? Everything's a preparation for ashes. And if it's, if, if it's a good performance, it's like, yeah, great. This sets up really well. And if it's a bad performance, it's like, well, this is a, a learning lesson. It's a great learning curve and, uh, and a great lesson for, as we prepare for the ashes, it's like almost everything else is disrespected. Yeah, which and see that's that's where I wanted to be, and that's where we were for a little bit. Where mm-hmm. England and Australia were like, oh, we're playing India and India, like this is the final fortress. That's what it was playing Australia and Australia. Like this, once we conquered this, we conquered the game of cricket. Um, and I always had that belief, and now we're just more on the back foot, more acceptance of bad results. Like when Vera, like that Robbie Shastri Dravi series, when Vera lost that South Africa series, his presser was. The direct antithesis of what Rohit said. He said, this is pathetic. This is a shameful. This shouldn't happen. We should be more competitive. Like, we have no excuses. It's not the pitch. It's not the conditions. It's not their bowling. It's our batting and it's our bowling. We need to be better. And Rohit was just the opposite. And like like you said, like, oh, it's a bit surprising from Rohit to be slightly more on the back foot when he's captain saying, given that he's proven, proven to be a winner. I have to imagine that's top down. Like, there, there's some sort of conversation coming down like hey don't press the fielders make them hit shots wait for them to make mistakes and stuff like that i'd have to hope um but that post game conference really reminded me of the early 2000s test india uh and that's worrisome that's a step backwards i didn't think that we were gonna have to take again yeah 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 and not not when you basically are meant to be running the icc Mm -hmm. (laughs) not basically when you do yeah so um well i mean maybe India don't, as such. Maybe they, they, they almost do, but don't entirely. Um, and the worst thing for me personally was my mum was giving me a lot of grief for this. 
it's like you sat there watching the game. You had it on while while you were on meetings and editing stuff and whatever else. And uh, what did you achieve out of this? So that's that's that that hurt, that hurt right here, you know. Yeah, it hurts. You, know. <laughs> hurt you know what I mean? <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that throw my whole life. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm a big proponent of, and your mom, I'm sure, is a beautiful auntie, and we adore her and we love her to pieces. Um, but it is, it's always fun to be a part of something bigger than you and to believe in a greater cause and to be in that community-like aspect. Like, I'm staying up from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. to watch this shit. I achieve nothing. I lose sleep. My work suffers. Everything goes bad. And my mood is angry. Um, but luckily, I have a cesspool of misery on Twitter that I can commiserate with. And you can't get that really outside of sports unless you want to jump into politics and fuck that. So... I achieved as much as the Indian team did. You should tell your mom that. So, food for thought. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good one, yeah. I mean, ultimately, I, I think I maybe I did, did a bit more because um, I managed to get to meet some deadlines. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, actually, I he, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like, why have you paused it? I was like, yeah, because I was focusing on my meeting. So you got a meeting? I was like, yeah. So it's paused. I was like, yeah, because I'm focusing on the meeting. I'm going to get back to it. I'm going to be able to skip through like the ad breaks four wickets that we lost four wickets oh yeah <laughs> basically it's basically what's happened and two prem jotish commercials <laughs> no we because it's on it's on like english channels here so we don't have those oh you guys don't get uh, prem jotish commercials no we do get that kind of stuff but not on like um no no i'm talking not that kind of stuff i'm talking prem jotish no no but we, we, we wouldn't get that on on because these um this is shown on mainstream channels uh, if that makes sense like so mainstream, like on the other channels, channels you get prem jotish yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. We go like that kind of stuff. Yeah, all, all that kind I'm of stuff. I'm about to fucking call to get some astrology and numerology to change my life because this fucking blows watching India play. And then literally, it's like we lose two wickets, and then Prem Jyotish in his tailored tux, looking as young as he did 20 years ago. Astrology Just, and numerology can change the views of life. And I might, I might, I might. If India lose this match, I will live stream a call to Prem Jyotish to figure out what's wrong for the so for is, the pop. This is always the nice thing about India that despite despite anything, everything. When when India are playing a tournament, <laughs> I've seen this so many times over the years. The news channel just rock up to do people of different faiths, different religions, in their places of worship, just praying for India to win the World Cup or win, win whatever tournament it is. Um, that's always nice. <laughs> like a bit of church at a mosque, at a temple, a god or whatever. And everyone's like, yeah, we need, we need this and we're going to pray to God. Obviously, that presupposes that God necessarily supports your team or pick, has one team over another. Um, no, they but, do and they're picking India. Yeah. I respect that. That's gamers fight game. That's totally worth it. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Um, the only issue is pray harder, guys. If you're going to those mandirs and temples, it's Diwali. Really put all you have into these prayers. Um, and send a lot to the Indian cricket team because we need, we, they need it. We need it. I need it. I think the world needs it. I think the world's a better place when, uh, you know, it's happens. It is. It is. Yeah. And like I said, oh. I want to be the villain, and we are now far cry from being the villain. No, we're kind of the the. Um... No, we're laughing stuff right now. Um, I will say though that the Indian ladies, we need to give them a shout out because uh, they finished the game yesterday. Yeah, uh, and they How won by the... six wickets against well, New Zealand. What is the ICC doing? They did the same shit after the men's World Cup. How are they another match in the exact same format a day later? And like India, like you think New Zealand woke up and like actually genuinely in the heart of hearts gave a fuck about this series no chance and i don't and blame them look uh, from there from my point from their point of view i think it makes sense you're in the you're in the middle east you're in dubai you're like i we need to make our way back to new zealand why don't we just kind of just catch a stop on the way it's three or three hours or so to to where mumbai Ahmedabad, that kind of area well the games were in Ahmedabad, so it's probably about three four hours on a plane i think from dubai um and then maybe they can get another yeah they're gonna have to probably stop off in like Bali or somewhere to just have a holiday and they eventually make their way back to New Zealand. Like, why not? Uh, yeah, maybe, but it does sort of, in my mind, dilute the matches. Um, I mean, Joss Butler said it when England played the Ireland series. I'm soon thereafter World Cup is like, if you're wondering how to make bilateral series more important, this is exactly how not to do it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I agree. Like, you, you kind of like, well, this, like, I'm not ready for this. I need, let me ride the high for a little while. Like, I, you know, we don't need this just yet. 
Yeah. And the players don't need this, and it's just a lot of cricket, and it's like, okay, wow, India won this series 2-1. Awesome. We lost the World Cup a week ago to them. Yeah. So, like, whatever. In the scheme of things, England, New Zealand doesn't care that this happened. India, maybe you'll find a little bit of optimism to build upon, which is fun and great. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if in a year and a half time, both these teams, both Indians and or both the women and the men's team, is completely revamped and rehauled. And I'm excited to sort of see. I think it's going to be Rishabh's team. If I had to pin on it right now, like who's going to be our guy going forward, it has to be Rishabh, I think. So, uh, do, you, do you mean just as the, as the, like the, the linchpin or do you mean as the captain? Captain. I think Boomer, I think Rohit will step down. Boomer will do a transition series, get Rishabh in the mix, um, and then maybe uh, young boy, Jay Swall, like VC or something like that. Um, I mean, there's still a lot of them. Talent Shumnam could make his name for it. Sure, Sh- can find his name back in the spot. Um, well, I think Sh- yeah. Shubman is probably yeah, probably high up the list. Uh, would it be a lot for Rishab to be keeper captain? Uh, I, mean, I suppose he's not, fan, op- he's not opening. I suppose so. It's not like he's yeah. Alex Stewart or someone. But and if any any if any fan base is used to that mold and sort of expects a keeper to be a captain, it's India. So. I don't think so. I think we, we have the mold for it. I trust Rishabh just has to get that composure, probably play better in red ball or in white ball. Um, but yeah, that's... that's... Yeah, he's, he's not the player in white ball that he should be. I think it reminds me a bit, I suppose, of throwing the Sewag, also dude from Delhi. But, yeah, exactly. Same uh, thing. When the fields are set for him, it's a lot harder to smash. Um, sure. Is there something to do with karma, the fact that this all this stuff about his fake knee injury came out and then all of a sudden like it's just a shit of a situation yeah. i don't know if it's karma because it's not like the story got leaked he fucking said it it's not like some backdoor communications came out he just fucking said it. he's like yeah i faked that shit so uh, maybe not okay maybe not karma but maybe just like in their minds they just poetic justice yeah 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 poetic justice let's say that yeah probably um i mean if you ask an indian fan this is like, oh, it's gamesmanship. But again, I'm well-versed and I'm cognizant and self-aware enough that if a fucking asshole butler did this, I'd be up in arms and I'd want him in Alcatraz. Um, sure, I think Ponting was upset about this in some ashes. And look, it's one of those things. There's there's always um, a situation where it's like, you, you're kind of all right with your guys doing it, but if the other team did it, you'd be up in arms. And that's... That's just the hypocrisy, hypocrisy of sports fans. Um, that happens. Yeah, so is there karma? Yeah, is there... There's probably a lot of reparations that the BCC has to pay for. I just It sucks that it has to happen at home and it has to happen to us fans. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to get angry. I know the listeners probably wanted me to scream and bitch and rant. Um and, well, yeah. it's it's one of those that now Uncle Karen is not Uncle Karen is not angry. He's just disappointed. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm disappointed, and I've accepted. I think that's the main thing is I've accepted that we're just not a great team right now. The way that we're playing, um, and like I said, this is one of those situations. And credit to Stuart Broad for making me have this realization when he retired. I was like, well, I came out of the blue, and like I even caught myself watching back some of his highlight videos and stuff like that. I was like, damn, he really was a really special talent. Um, I didn't really appreciate it and I won't ever because I hate him. But, um, <laughs> Although you have just said that. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, like he knows how to bowl a ball. Oh, fucking cool, dude. How about you cure cancer? Something important. Um, but, oh, shit. You just ended up like just the sports industry. You just killed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's just one of those things. Appreciate it. Virat's given us so much. Rohit's really, given us so much. The Bulls have given us so much. Um, enjoy the series. It was, it was one of those things like you never expect the end to come until it happens. And I think maybe this will rule, sort of run of dominance at home and it needs a replenishing. And, and I've been saying it for like three years. We got to get the youth ready. We have to get the youth ready. And I'm, I'm sure these guys will pl- finish out this World Cup cycle. Um, but we have to start getting the youth ready because we're just, we're slightly falling behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, no there's a there's a lot to be said for that, especially with when you've got a depth talent, you've got people that turn up, but then aren't ready because the, the you know the, the stalwarts are, are there. I mean, look, yes, 
I would agree with that completely. What I what I think though is that Gotham be will be and his team will be particularly upset knowing that you're so angry you stop caring. Um, that's basically what you said to them, and they're like that that will hurt them a lot. They're like, wow, he's not even he's not even shouting at us. He must be really pissed. Um, yeah, I'm sad. Happened. I'm sad. That's like I'm also a Yankees fan, so like Yankees lost a game, finished at like ten thirty, and then I go to watch and you just get I have a 30 minute break take my dog out come back in 8 hours and just masochistically watch India get fucking bondaged by New Zealand well the good news is there's about 3 weeks to go until Australia and um, I will be watching it in those at that time zone I think it's it's a bit a better time of day for you but for me it's like yeah. I'll I'll be there I'll be there for boxing day so, yeah me and well my- hopefully Hopefully, yeah, you're, you're going to be there. It's, yeah, in person, um, of course. Um, hopefully, Knuckle will be available then, and Ritanka has sorted his life out and stopped caring about exams to the point where he's missing podcasts. Um, or, or hopefully, he's passed them all. Either way, yeah. um, one way or another, hopefully, he's back as well. Uh, should we leave it there? And we'll, we'll, I suppose, we'll have a, a post series post-mortem next week um, <sighs> after the, the, the next five days of fun and see what that brings. Yep. Like <laughs> and subscribe. Tell your friends. If anyone needs therapy as an India cricket fan, drop your questions, drop your griefs. Um, like I said, sport's beautiful because there's a cesspool of misery on Twitter that we can all commiserate. So let's find each other. Let's help me help you help us. And yeah, leave any. Thank you for those of you who've been leaving comments in the uh, on YouTube as well. Please do carry on doing that. And um, yeah, keep them coming in. Any thoughts? Any questions? Any comments? Uh, let us know, and hopefully we can either pick them up or, or riff off them in the next it's episode. A competitive match. I. Will, it's a competitive match, and we get I don't know what ten retweets. Let's keep it modest. I will live stream myself watching the last two hours at two to four in the morning i will live stream that just to watch me. current and his and his dog what's what's doggy called oh well, <laughs> this one's killer um killer yeah no i named her adelaide prior to the 36 all out in adelaide um it's okay so that's it's always a humble reminder well no you started off more as an r&b artist adelaide and you developed into more of a, a rap star killer i think it's it's it makes complete sense yeah yeah it's, so it's the evolution she goes by addy also known as baddie but yeah adelaide and every single time i call her by her full name i was like son of a bitch chose the Addie one is, place where a historical devos addy is a baddie um that's okay that happens because it keeps you grounded it's like the hulk when he says i'm always angry there she is oh that's a disgusting room. Never mind. Um, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> cut. Uh, Curran's so distressed right now. That's what's happening. Right. Anyway, yes, let's leave it there. We'll come back um, next week for more fun and games. Shubh Diwali to everyone. Um, may the, the light shine bright for you. Um, hopefully those lights are not the bales being whipped off for a crap run out or uh like a full toss really, clean board yeah yeah not that kind of light till next week go and follow us on, on socials come back corner with two k's and like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff that current said ciao for now